It's the church that sells miracles for money. And now the Prime Minister is being dragged into a scandal involving one of C3's former pastors. Reporter Dan Nolan will join us with the damning photos in a moment. But first, more explosive claims from our long-running investigation. Go! Go in Jesus' name! There was no one to stop what he was doing to me. Loose, loose in Jesus' name! They have no training in mental health. They are trained in the Bible. <laughs> and I was told to stop taking my medication. That is dangerous. I think religion and this church are completely separate. Basically, money is the God within that church. Pastor Phil Pringle lives like a millionaire, mainly off the back of donations from his devoted followers at C3 Church. Hayley Stewart used to be one of them. Now she lives in homeless accommodation. How do you think Phil Pringle views business people versus poor people? If you're a poor person, you're not, you're basically not trying enough. You, you need more faith. Um, you just got to get back up and, you know, pray about it. Hayley immersed herself in the entire C3 experience, even feeling the pressure to tithe 10% of her income when she was surviving on a new start allowance. There's so many people in the church who need help. The way they, the church helps them is to tell them to tithe. Hayley did need help. She joined the church age 15, suffering from anxiety. Instead of receiving counselling or medical advice, she says a number of different pastors tried to heal her with prayer. We've seen how other C3 pastors do this at their annual conference. C3 Australia director John Pearce makes a hissing sound as he claims the Holy Spirit fixes various medical ailments. Three or four backs. Is it discs? Is someone, has anyone got a tumour? This, this, this. OK, just across here right now. Haley was once one of these people falling down on the altar, but her mental health was never healed. When you're on that altar being healed, what happens to you? They're putting their hand on your forehead quite hard and everyone around you is falling over and you're going to look make the place look untidy if you're standing up and everyone's lying down. She says when she was 16, a young pastor by the name of Josh Kelsey tried to heal her at C3's Australian headquarters at Sydney's Oxford Falls. Let me get my, my Bible out then. He's a self-confessed university dropout, but as the son of one of C3's top pastors, Mark Kelsey, he too found his calling as a preacher. Josh, Josh Kelsey, Kelsey. Josh, Kelsey. The Josh Kelsey, he's the guy. Haley says Josh Kelsey performed what is known at C3 as a deliverance, claiming he'd removed her anxiety, even though she was feeling more anxious than ever. I, w I was apparently saved and I was told to stop taking my medication. Who, t who told you that? It was Pastor Josh Kelsey. As it's not my role to offer religious sacraments or advice, it's not their role to get themselves involved in medical details and treatment. Dr Mark Cross is a psychiatrist who specialises in complex mental health issues. I cannot stress enough that it is extremely dangerous for someone to tell someone who's prescribed medication to stop their medication. In a statement, a C3 spokesperson said Josh Kelsey emphatically denies ever saying she should discontinue prescribed medication. They say C3 has clear policies in this area which are never to advise people to change medication without clearance from their doctor. Haley says without medication her condition got worse, eventually developing into schizophrenia. And that's when Pastor Mike Connell was brought in. When the law of God is broken or violated, that's where demons come and operate. Mike Connell founded his own church in New Zealand, but is a regular at C3 events where he's considered an expert in delivering demons. I ask you to forgive me for concealing my pain, for agreeing with demonic spirits. 
This is him in action in the US at what can only be described as a mass exorcism. Power of God, touch now! Touch Holy Ghost right now! Touch, loose, loose, loose! By the time Pastor Connell met Haley Stewart, she was starting to have delusions about demons. I used to uh, believe there was a demon rotting in my chest and I, I believe that that paranoia came from constantly hearing, you know, about demons and how they're real. So imagine bringing this frightened, fragile woman to this bloke for healing. I break that control. Loose. So how does that make you feel when someone's in your face screaming about demons? I'd never felt so paranoid in my life. I was, te I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified. There was no one to stop what he was doing to me. These people are not trained. They are pastors who have studied the Bible. Dawn says her mental health also suffered whilst attending C3 Church. She joined age 19 and was soon employed as a secretary to one of the senior pastors. She says she even used to babysit Phil and Chris Pringle's children. I adored him. Um, I, I, I thought he was a man of God, amazing. She says as Phil Pringle grew the church from its humble beginnings, the pressure to tithe increased. It was all about increasing the size and the wealth and the spread and the reach of the church. It was not about giving to people who really need it. Dawn was a devout Christian, but says she now can't even bear to enter a church following the exorcisms she endured at the hands of other pastors to end a same-sex relationship. Even to the point where one of the ministers rang up the person that I was seeing and told her she was of the devil. And I had people lay hands on me, tell me, Satan, get out of her, leave her alone, she's God's child. Dawn says she suffered permanent damage to her mental health from C3's attempts to change her sexuality. I ended up having, you know, close to breakdown after breakdown after breakdown, and it still haunts me, and we're talking 25 years later. Being told that you can pray the gay away does not help a person who's struggling with their sexuality and identity. I know in my heart that we're not the only family who have suffered at the hands of of Phil and Chris Pringle. Bridget grew up deeply embedded in C3 Church, even appearing as a young girl in this music video where Phil Pringle was plugging a new album. You're looking for praise and worship. You're looking for the presence of God. Praise brings us into the presence of God. Her father, Nigel Allen, was a large donor to the church. What did your dad think of Phil Pringle? He thought he was the bee's knees. He used to call him such a man of God such a great man of God. Her father became a pastor too and was working towards his dream of opening his own C3 church franchise. I come from one of the best churches on the earth, C3 church in Sydney. This video shows Nigel Allen preaching at a conference in Arizona about how Phil Pringle delivered his heavenly calling. Pastor Phil had an older call in the evening service and he said there's a young man and God has called you to preach the gospel to the nations of the world. But when Nigel Allen hit rough times, Bridget says Pastor Phil provided no support. Nigel was diagnosed with a rare lung disease and had a double lung transplant, forcing him out of work and eventually leading to bankruptcy. He lost his home and ended up living in subsidised housing. But they had no furniture at all. They had to get rid of every, they had to sell everything or get rid of, they had nothing. And actually St Vinnie's furnished that apartment for them. Not C3 Church? Not C3 Church, no. Bridget's sister was attending Oxford Falls Grammar, a school founded by Phil Pringle. She says her parents had once paid the school fees for another student who'd hit rough times. So her sister hoped Phil Pringle might now return the favour. My sister actually wrote a letter to Phil and Chris Pringle asking if they could sponsor her or help in some way so that she could finish. She didn't even get a response from Phil at all. Nothing. Crickets. What does it say about Phil Pringle to do that? I don't understand how he can sleep at night. I really don't. Bridget says her father started to question everything in his life. 
He just lost hope. He's like, what is all of this about? I spent my whole life pouring into this God and this, you know, and for what? Nigel Allen would tragically take his own life at a funeral service held in a small chapel at C3 sprawling headquarters. Bridget claims she received one final insult from Phil Pringle. I'll never forget it. I saw Phil Pringle just walk straight past. He didn't even come inside to pay his respects to my father. And that is something that I cannot and will not ever understand. A C3 spokesperson said... C3 was aware of the serious issues impacting the Allen family and provided extensive pastoral support in response. Pastor Pringle's own memory of the events differ on many points from the account provided by Bridget Allen. But Phil Pringle has admitted before that empathy is not one of his strengths. I am not a counsellor. Do not come to me for counsel. You will be worse at the end of the session. I have no empathy bone in my body. Do you think Phil Pringle runs this like a business or like a religion? Oh, there's no doubt about it. He runs this like a business. Lucy says she spent one year attending C3 on the Sunshine Coast before realising it does not practise what the Bible teaches about compassion and helping those less fortunate than yourself. And by all means, you know, get together on a Sunday and have freedom of assembly, but you really need to be calling it something else, like Pringleism, Pringology, something else. You're not, you should not be advertising this, that this is biblical Christianity, because it isn't. Go make millions and give it to the house of God. Amen. Dan Nolan joins me now from our Brisbane bureau. Dan, how's the Prime Minister been linked to a C3 scandal? Well, Layla, we've obtained photos of the then Treasurer Scott Morrison attending the grand opening of C3 Central City Church in Sydney. You can see in these pictures Mr Morrison is flanked by Phil Pringle and disgraced C3 pastor Anthony Shalala. Back in September, we uncovered details that the married pastor Shalala was involved in sexual affairs with three women in his congregation. He left the church in disgrace and has since died, leaving behind three children. Now it's emerged the PM was the special guest at Anthony Shalala's grand opening of his new church. Scott Morrison is not a member of C3, but is a follower of a different Pentecostal church. His spokesperson told us today that this is a tragic situation in so many ways, but it is also a private matter for the family involved and the Prime Minister's thoughts are with them at this difficult time. What else have you uncovered, Dan, regarding C3's handling of this scandal? Well, Layla, we understand that Anthony Shalala was paid $300,000 compensation by C3 to leave the church. We asked why it was appropriate for him to receive compensation and also whether any of the women who were involved in those affairs, whether they'd received anything, and we were told no comment, Layla. OK, thank you very much, Dan. And if you or someone you know needs help, there is support available. Contact Lifeline. The number is on your screen now, 13 11 14. That's 13 11 14.